Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this short video about the Morso 1410 log or multi-fuel burner. Um, we recently bought this uh, multi-fuel stove and uh, we installed it okay, everything went well, but we had a few issues uh, of the stove running so we uh, eventually had to get in touch with Morso Direct to see if they could help us. Uh, now it came with a user manual uh, if that's what you want to call it, uh, it certainly doesn't have the right consumer information in it as i.e. how to actually run the stove efficiently and properly. It gives you very basic instructions which I think really comes down to the fact that if you have an installer coming to do your stove they would pass on that information. But that's really uh, not acceptable because people don't always listen correctly uh, you may want to sell your property in a few years time and the new owner may be unsure how to operate the device. So I thought this video, having checked around, I can't find anything similar which says how to definitively use this stove. So here it is. It's a stove, uh, 1410 stove, and it involves the whole process of lighting and running the stove and what can, you can expect from a newly installed stove. So here we go. This is the uh, Morso 1410, um, which we recently purchased, and uh, I wanted to just go the operating instructions of this stove, because although the stove was installed correctly, we had a few issues early on in its life, and that mainly was to do with smoke, fire alarms going off, uh, the fire seemed out of control, it was all a bit of a mess. So we referred to the user manual as you would and I have to say that this in my opinion is very low quality. It really doesn't go to the core of the problems that you need to, uh, to cover. It doesn't really give you the right information as to how to run the fire. It is in my opinion, as I said, low quality and I don't think it reflects the quality of the stove. You spend a lot of money on this device and it's something you're going to live with for a long time and surely it makes sense to spend just a little bit more money on the operating manual so that people really know how to use it now it's okay the installer may give you this information and you can probably operate the stove perfectly fine but let's say you didn't get that information or the installer wasn't that good at telling you about the information or you didn't fully understand what he was saying in the hustle of having your new fire installed or let's say you even want to sell the property and somebody else needs to take over the fire who wasn't there when the installer was there. So what might sound as at first uh, instance a rather stupid question how do you run a stove because that's what we thought it's easy isn't it but in actual fact it's a little bit more complicated than you first expect. So stove is installed uh, as you can see a nice brand new clean unit we've burnt it through so there's ash in there at the moment but when you first install this stove and start it up as we did after about two hours the smoke alarms in our house went crazy we have three or four in the vicinity it even found its way up through the hallway up through into the landing and set the one off in the landing that's how far away it was and it was a an uncomfortable smell coming from the unit. We obviously assumed that was smoke. But in fact, in this case, at that particular moment, it wasn't. It was purely this paint finish burning in, or burning off, if you want to put it that way. This paint finish takes time for it to settle down. So, once you turn this unit on, when it gets to about 300, 350 degrees, that smell will almost definitely come into the room. Now the best thing to do is run it two or three times to clear that smell through and it will eventually go. But it's easy to confuse that smell with smoke. At the same time, I would say when you do an install, definitely put a, C, a CO2 oxygen um, monoxide sensor into the house, into the room. Because if there is a problem with this stove and you're unaware of it, and you fall asleep, it can kill you. Uh, it's as simple as that. But with a, a bit of sense, 
the stove will give years and years of fabulous service. And I have to say, this is one fabulous stove. Right, if we are lighting this for the first time, uh, the proper way to light the stove is obviously fill the fire basket with some um, very dry kindling. Make a nice little stack inside here. Light it and then shut the door, not completely shut. You could, if you latch it, that's latched. Just leave it off of the latch. It really doesn't matter at this point how these uh, vents are, are positioned, but it becomes important as the fire is, establishes itself. So from here, leave this open. The kindling will roar quickly and get hot very quickly, which is what you want. You want the stove to get up to working temperature as quickly as possible. So once it's burning and you have a nice steady um, red base of, of uh, embers in that fire then you can start loading on your other fuels. I would suggest at this stage keep to one fuel at a time so don't necessarily mix coal and wood together because they burn in different ways and I'll explain that now. Once the fire is up and running shut the door. This bottom valve is then shut off. Now we stupidly thought that valve is the one you leave open to draw the fire through the basket and uh, and away it goes but that is not the case when you're burning wood <coughs> wood is burnt using the top valve now this is explained to me because uh, wood gives off a gas as it's burning and that gas is what i think they loosely term as the secondary um, secondary burn so it's burning at the base already this is then burning off the gas and providing the oxygen to the unit. Now, air is being drawn into the room, uh, from the room, into the through the vent, through the top of the fire, and then out through the flue. And that system will keep the fire running indefinitely, provided you keep fueling it all of the time. This bottom valve is shut. You don't want air going through here. If you have both valves open at the same time, you now have an imbalance of, of pressures going on in the stove. So if you were to open this valve open, which we did, and have this valve open as well, and you've got smoking fuel in here, it will find its way out through this vent and it can kick off your uh, smoke alarms. So rule number one, particularly with this stove, and I'm sure it's common with other stoves as well, shut the bottom valve, open the top valve. This allows you to control the fire only via the top valve, but this is only in the case of wood. In the case of coal or uh, uh, smokeless fuels, that of sort of materials, that likes to uh, draw its fire from the bottom. So it takes its air supply from underneath and through. So in this case, you'd shut off the top valve and you'd open the bottom valve. And you control the fire using that valve. Now, with, with smokeless fuels, of course, there's less smoke in any case, but the whole system of keeping this glass clean relies upon you getting a good temperature inside the burner. If you let that go too low, you're going to start creating smoke. If you put new wood on, which can't ignite quickly, that is going to create smoke and then uh, mess up your glass. So always the key thing, run at an optimum temperature all of the time. Don't shut it down so low that it's just going to tick over smouldering. That is not how the stove is meant to work. So, in our particular case, we purchased one of these. Uh, now, this is a, a, a flue temperature gauge, and it tells you roughly what range you need to be working in. Here, obviously, in the middle is absolutely perfect. Needle perfectly in the middle, absolutely fine. It can deviate a little bit left or right. That's no problem. But if it's coming round here to to the, the far right you're running the stove far too hot and you will create damage too low and you've got just the reverse effect you've got smoke build up you're running too cold it's inefficient it's not burning off any of the gases it's not the place to be so this literally sits on the flue and stays there so you can monitor the fire the other thing we purchased for our stove was one of these fans 
or in our case, two of these fans. Now these fans um, don't rely on batteries. They literally rely and operate from the heat of the stove. So the heat hits the strip here. I don't understand the, uh, the uh, chemistry behind all of that, but these fans soon start to, to pick up speed. And boy, do they pick up speed. They really do go. And these will allow all that warmth, which is held in our case in this chimney stack, it pushes it completely away from the burner and fills the room with really warm air. We chose to have two of these. Um, these came from a company called Flu Systems, but I'm sure there's plenty of others out there which you can buy, uh, which would be just as good. This sits on the back of the burner. In our case, as I said, we have two of them. When the fire's lit, and slowly as the casing uh, becomes warm, these will start up and the effect is, uh, is fantastic. So I hope that helps you understand how the stove should and should not work. So just to recap, if using wood, top vent only, bottom vent closed. If using coal, top vent closed, bottom vent open. Both vents open, no. Only on a, a very slight adjustment here to clear the window glass, but, but really not, not so necessary. So I hope that helps uh, you get over any startup issues with your stove and the confusion between what actually could be smoke and what is actually the burner itself bedding in. We've now had the burner running three days. There is absolutely zero smell from the burner. It's running super efficient. Um, it's a lovely, lovely warmth coming from it. Our room operates at around about 25 degrees for hour on end. And the great thing about having the fans is, before you go to bed at night, you can allow the fire to drop down. Let's say you're going to bed at 11.30. You could probably stop stoking the fire uh, just after 10 o'clock. And these fans will just push the residual heat from the burner itself into the room. So they are very, very cost effective ways of keeping the room warm without burning fuel right to the very end. So I hope that helps. Uh, we will run a video of the starting in a few seconds just so you can see the process. Right everybody, this is the uh, lighting procedure for the fire. Just sort of go over it quickly with you. Just need a, excuse me, just need a fire lighter, pop that in, build a nest around it, Now then, as I mentioned, it's not important at this stage how the valves are open or shut. The key here is to push the door till it's almost shut and you'll notice immediately that fire starts to come up. Now the wood's still not fully ignited yet, so there's not a huge draw. But all these fires rely on a good flame, good heat running through the chimney continue that draw through the chimney so it's at this stage you want to use as introduce as much air as you can and this is now picking up the fire we'll come back in a few seconds and just see how that is getting along just to let you know um, we're into the burn for a few minutes now a few uh, minutes and you can already see that this fan at the back of the unit has started spinning. Uh, I suspect the other one's going to be going in a few seconds so uh, quietly keep your eye on that it should start up as well. Right so at this point we're going to settle the fire down and then the other fan started now. Well, that's a good that's a good flame. 
good place to start building the fire. As I said, introduce, don't overload, introduce small logs to start with. Something to get it just started. If you now shut the door, you can see how that fire is damped down. But this bottom vent, in the case of wood, needs to be shut. You can see it's gone really low. But this vent, as the fire picks up, will give you a beautiful flickering fire. It takes at least an hour to achieve that effect. If you feel you want to push the fire a bit harder to start with, you can just undo the bottom door and let some more air into the burner. That ignites that fuel quickly again, but not for long. Shut it again and let the fire build up gently. Now these fans have started to turn, they're turning quite slowly at the moment, but I can bet you in about 30 minutes they'll be going flat out and they're very silent and they'll be pushing all this heat away to the unit. Okay, we'll come back when the fire's fully settled down. So here we are, um, probably 10 minutes into uh, firing the burner and as you can see we're settling down to a, a nice steady flame. Now that's nowhere near complete yet, that's going to take another 30 minutes to an hour before we'll um, have the absolute perfect fire. A lot of that wood still in the burner hasn't started burning yet so we need to give it time. But in essence that's um, what you're going to achieve regardless, that's what you want to try and get to is just a nice steady fire. In the end you'll just see nice steady flames flickering off of this wood and you'll be finished and you can control the output when the fire's fully warm and the flue pipe here is fully warm as well because with the flue pipe being warm it pulls more air in from the burner itself so it completes the cycle so that is really how to start it and just to show you how the reintroduction of more air can affect this fire as soon as i open up the bottom door The fire soon picks up. Now that's a good method of boosting the fire to get all your bedded wood nice and hot. Then you can start introducing all your other materials, your other woods. But as I say, keep it sensible. Don't put huge, great big pieces on it at a time. Uh, and just let it build up. It'll become natural after two or three lights. You'll do this without thinking. I really hope that's been helpful to you, and. Uh, if you have any other questions, then obviously please ask. I will try my best to get them uh, answered for you. But um, that's how to run a Morso 1410 stove. Thank you very much.